So welcome. welcome. Let's be um let's be very in tune today to our our bodies and try to appreciate whether we're moving fast or slow or it's rigorous or gentle part of the class that uh, there's a, a sort of a dedication to sensitivity really listening to what's going on in the body how each posture is causing an effect or a sensation so in this opening seat or, or standing if you're standing that's fine actually but opening seat Check in with your spine and intentionally bring your low back forward. You can see how when I bring my low back forward, it brings my chest into the screen. Actually, it makes me so much taller, you can't even see the top of my head. This is sort of my normal resting seat. And just by bringing my low back forward and up, I grew a few inches. So you can feel that action happening in your low back. kind of sink your low back back, almost what we call it like a rounded back. Notice how you shrink and the other sensations. Let's just do this two more times. Bring the low back forward, which will naturally go up, and then bring the low back back, which will naturally bring you down. Let's do two more. Forward. Don't cause any pain or discomfort. Just explore the low back mobility. Forward and back. Good. Now take your arms and this way, when the bicep rotates away, feel what happens here. So you can turn the bicep away from the body, both arms, biceps turn away. Feel what happens in this chest and shoulders. And then we internally rotate. We take the hands in, elbows out. Notice what happens in the shoulders. Are you feeling as you turn the biceps out and in front, the opening of the chest, shoulder blades move away from the ears, they move towards each other on the spine. This may or may have some sensations for you, moods energetic qualities. Then we do the opposite, elbows out, turn the palms in. This broadens our shoulder blades, kind of rounds the shoulders slightly, softens the chest. Let's explore mobility one more time each way. And then rotate back. From here, you're gonna to come to a uh, child's posture on your mat. Child's posture, you can sit your hips back, take them out. Rest the forehead on the floor, keep it floating. And then lift your right hand in the air so it's floating. And stretch your right arm further forward. And then place the hand back down. So now that right side should be longer than your left. And feel. Keep the right hand where it is, lift the left arm up in the air. Feel what has to engage to support this pose. Stretch the left arm forward longer and then rest it back down. So now the whole posture is bigger, longer. What do you notice? Inhale, come up tabletop position. Try to bring your ribcage as high as you can. Bring your low back as high as you can, drawing your belly muscles into your low back. As you do this, push down through your sit bones, down through your shins. Now reverse that. Try to mush your ribs and your low back as low as you can so you're hanging between your shoulder blades. Almost think, lift your tailbone. 
And just notice the sensations through your torso and spine. More sensitivity. Lift the whole spine, drawing the belly muscles toward the back. Be specific. Push the sit bones towards the shins. Push the shins towards the floor. And then reverse it. Melt the low back and ribs towards the floor. And does your body have a preference? Does it, is it not maybe resistant to one direction of movement? Let's go back and forth three more times. And just become aware of which one your body likes more. You don't have to have any big explanation to why it likes it more. Just find it easy to be there, easy to move deeper into it. Here you're going to come back to a neutralish spine. Extend your left leg on, back onto the floor and stretch your right arm out into the sky in front. And you're going to reach the right hand forward as you lift your left leg up to counterbalance. Keep reaching the right hand forward and lifting the left leg higher to counterbalance. Breathe. Bend your left knee and reach your right arm big back like you're going to try and touch your foot. Maybe you touch it and then place it back down. And the knee. Got a leap person to the party. Um, extend your left hand out in front, your right leg straight back. Control the movement. Right leg is straight back. Touching the floor. As you reach the left hand forward, it kind of brings the body forward. It encourages the right leg to lift. As you reach further forward, the more the right leg can lift. Breathing, control. Do a preference. Is this side easier, more challenging to balance? Bend the right leg, swoop the left arm. Maybe it touches the foot and then bring it back down. Let's try that first side again. Left leg back. Right hand out. If this is too challenging to balance, you just choose a more moderate variation or just don't go fully into the pose. Again, as you reach the fingers forward, extend through your core, through your fingertips. You may naturally want to lift the leg to help counterbalance. Breathing. Bend the knee. Swoop the arm. And then touch the floor. Right leg back. Left arm out. Reach as you lift the right leg. Very good. It's okay to lose balance. Just come right back into it. Bend the knee, swoop the arm, and touch back down. Good. Tuck the point the toes and rest the forehead on the mat. Place your hands on your hips. First, contemplate. Pushing down through your knees, use your core to lift up to kneeling without using your hands. So your hips are on the ground still. I'm sorry, your knees and shins are on the ground still. Open your chest. Good, now use your core. Send the hips back, bring the forehead back to the floor as close to it as you can. If you need the hands, you rest the hands and then rest the head. Then hands on hips. Use your core, push down through your knees. Inhale, roll up. Open your chest this time. Pull those elbows and shoulders back. Exhale, send the hips back. See if the forehead can find its way down to the floor. Again, if you need the hands first to support, then rest the head. One more time. Push down through your knees. Try to lift up without the use of your hands. Open the chest, good. Same idea, we're gonna do a little bit different. Instead of rounding the back, now you're just gonna push your sit bones back and reach your chin forward. So you're sitting back, you're not curling down. And then inhale, lift up, hips go forward, chest opens. So we're trying to kind of begin our a back bend sensation with that low back. Push the sit bones back towards the heels. Keep the chin lifted. Inhale, stretch your ribs and chest forward and up. Let those hips come forward. Exhale, sit back. 
we're kind of stick, you can think of the phrase stick your butt out. It's not the best use of language, but it does get the point across. <laughs> Inhale, lift up. Exhale, sit back. Last one. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, relax. Place the hands down on the floor and lift the hips up, downward facing dog. Push through your hands and try to turn, without turning, try to turn your fingers away from each other to open the top of the shoulder. Pushing back through your groins, down through your heels. Breathe. Good. One step, two steps to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back pose. Exhale, round the back. Bend your knees. Inhale, rise up to standing. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms to the sky, lean back, look up. Try to pull your chest to the sky. You can like imagine you're holding a pull-up bar and pull down to lift the chest up. And then exhale, reach those fingers up, reach those fingers forward as you bow to the earth. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step your left foot back, high lunge pose. Inhale, rising up. Exhaling, placing the hands down, stepping back to plank pose, lowering down through the exhale. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stepping the left foot forward, rising up on the next inhale, arms to the sky, high lunge. Exhale, stepping to the front of your mat. You can step the blocks if it helps you. Hit the blocks to get the front edge. Inhale, come forward, flat back. Exhale, release the back. Inhale, bend your knees with the fingertips touching the ground or touching the block. Try to stretch your chin forward and breathe here. So you're pushing down the floor, pushing down the block. Knees are bent. Like you're in a downhill skier pose and you're trying to stretch your chin and chest forward and up. Breathe. Now from here, keep lifting. Let your crown win that race between your hands and rise up with your hands. We call this chair pose. We've got a big arch in our low back. Breathe. And then rise up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Good. Inhale, arms up. Okay, just come a little forward. You can lean back. Exhale, pull down your arms like the pull up bar. So you're opening your chest even more. Inhale, reaching back up. And then sending those fingers forward as you hinge up your hips. Bowing forward, hands come to the block so they come to the floor. Inhale, to flat back foot. Exhale, bend your knees, step your right leg back. Instead of high lunge, this time we're going to warrior one. So you're going to spin the back foot down and rise up. Good. Exhale, straighten both legs, bring your hands to your hips, and send your chin out. Pyramid pose with a flat back, pushing down through both feet, trying to lift energy up through the soles of your feet. Both legs are straight. Inhale, come back up, rebend the front knee, warrior one. And then exhale, place your hands on the mat, step back, plank pose, lower down. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward, lift all the way up, warrior one. Arms in the sky. Good. Exhale, straighten both legs, hands on hips. Take a breath here. Secure both feet, plant them into the earth. And now hinge at the hips as you bow halfway forward, trying to keep the back engaged and active, not rounded here. One breath. 
Inhale, rise back up. Then the front knee back to warrior one. And then exhale, place those hands at the front or on those blocks and step to forward fold. Release your spine. Inhale, flat back, pushing down through the earth. Exhale, bend your knees, trying to drape your belly muscles and your base ribs on those thigh bones. Fingertips touch the earth. Keep the fingertips on the earth and try to lift the crown, keeping those knees bent. Fingertips on the earth, lift the crown. Feel that resistance. Be sensitive to this push and pull happening inside the body. Keep lifting. Now let the crown win the race. Start to arch the back, lifting up chair pose. Using the low back to float in and up. Strong leg, strong low back. And all the way up to standing, leaning back, hand in front of your heart. Very nice. Inhale, swoop the arms up. Let's do that whole thing a little quicker this time. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step the left foot back. Inhale, rise up, warrior, or high lunge. Exhale, hands on the mat. Step back, plank pose, lower down. Inhale, high cobra, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the left foot forward, rise up, high lunge. Exhale, step to the front of your mat. Forward bend. Inhale, half back, flat back pose. Exhale, bend your knees. Like you're trying to be a downhill skier, lifting up, rise up, inhale, chair pose. Take a breath here. Next inhale, standing. Hands to the heart. Finish the cycle. Got the warrior one and a half. Here we pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step the right foot back, warrior one. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, hinge up your hips. Inhale, back up. Exhale, warrior one. Inhale, place your hands down. Step back, exhale, down through plank. Inhale, up dog, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward. Turn the back foot down, rise up. On the next inhale, straighten both legs. Exhale, bow over your pyramid legs, halfway. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bend through front knee. And then place those hands at the front of the mat. Step forward, forward, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend your knees, fingers down. Inhale, rise up, chair pose. Exhale, standing, hands to heart. Good. Turn the palms to face front, mountain posture. Take a moment, close the eyes, and allow the posture to receive the sensations of that warm up of sun salutes. Where does the body want to open? Where does it want to tone? So that the first couple poses here of our practice have brought. We'll intentionally lift the toes. Try to think as though you're trying to lift your feet straight off the ground to tone your leg muscles. Bring the low back in and lift it up. Try to open the whole front of your body. A little bit exaggerated if you're a racketeer or something. Open the front of your chest, open those arms slightly back. And now from here, push down more through your heels. So this kind of brings your belly muscles back. This will bring your sit bones down as you push down through your heel and feel the sensation of how the pose can completely shift. 
by where we direct our sensitivity. One more time. Lift the toes, try to feel like you're drinking your whole feet off the ground. So those kneecaps lift, the low back comes in, and the chest and ribs lift and open, arms pull back. Still mountain pose, we're just taller and brighter in the front. And now intentionally send energy down through your sit bones, through your heels, and keep doing it. So you can actually let the body get a little more neutral. Bring that change in sensitivity. Good. Take a wide stance, step your uh, feet wide and parallel, reach the arms up to the sky. Pull back, flex your wrists, pull back with your fingertips, and then exhale, hinge at your hips, bow halfway forward. Try to keep your back from round. You want to keep that nose or chin forward. Push down through the feet and try to drink energy up the inseam of your legs. Drink energy up the inseam of your legs, lift your chest up. Using those low back muscles. Good, rise back up to standing. Now push the pelvis forward and down through your feet. It's a little bit of a back bend. Inhale, stretch the arms out wide like warrior two. Now let's turn the left foot out 90 degrees. Bend the knee to try to cover the pinky, the big toe. And then straighten the leg. And then bend the right knee to try to cover. I'm sorry, I think you've got your left foot turned out. I've got my right. Your left, the knee that's bending, <laughs> aim it towards the pinky toe. And then inhale, straighten. So we're taking the knee different directions. Exhale towards the big toe. Straighten. Exhale towards the pinky toe. Straighten. This time, exhale straight towards the second toe. So it's in our normal alignment and push through your feet, warrior two posture. Stretching the arms wider, stretching out across the front of the hips. Turn the palms up, breathe here. Inhale, sweep the arms up, pivot on the heel, back to center. I think we were mirroring each other. I can't remember the original set actually. Inhale, arms up, turn your right foot out or your second side if it wasn't your right foot. Exhale, warrior two. Looks like I've got the right thing for most folks. That's a good sign. <laughs> Inhale, straighten your front leg. And exhale, send the knee towards the big toe. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale towards the pinky toe. So we're trying to be sensitive. What is the difference? What do we notice? Inhale, center. Exhale, big toe. Inhale, center. Exhale, pinky toe. Inhale, center. Go one more time. Big toe. Center. Pinky toe. Center, and this time bend the knees straight towards the second toe, classic position. Breathe in your warrior two, let those palms turn up. Opening across the front of the hips, pushing energy down through your feet. Inhale, lift, pivot on the heel, bring the hands together. Exhale, hands to heart, hinging at your hips. And releasing the spine into your wide legged forward bend. Push down through your hands or fingertips, push down through your feet. And while you're pushing down, try to bring energy up the inseams of the leg, up the core of your spine into a flat back pose. Still pushing down with fingertips and feet, bringing up energy up the inseam of the legs. It's available to you. You can stretch your arms out like wings. Keep pushing down and use those back muscles. Reverse swan dive all the way up. And then send your sit bones down through your heels. Bend your knees, windmill the hands to the front of your mat. And exhale, sit down, share pose.
Breathe. Two more deep breaths, keeping the ankles and knees close together this time it's available to you, actually squeezing them in touch. Good, place your hands down and let's step your left foot back into low, we're in the back leg is straight, but we're in lunge. And the hands are on blocks, we're on the floor. You take the left hand and focus on that one, either putting on the mat, maybe taking that block and putting it on a lower setting. Then inhale, turn your right arm open, twisted lunge. From here, you're gonna exhale, straighten the right leg and send your right hand towards the front edge of your mat. So you're stretching that right hand forward, pulling the right leg straight. And maybe as you pull the right leg straight, you can try to work your left heel down for stability. Okay, so from this position, we're gonna inhale back to the twisted lunge. And then exhale into this pyramid pose, slightly twisted, you're reaching that right hand forward to create extension. Inhale, lift the arm up. Exhale, straighten the right leg, send that arm out in front. Pull, try to hollow your right belly muscles away from the right hip. Inhale, reach, twisted lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Good, one more time, twisted lunge. Drop the back knee and look back over that right thumb. Bend your left knee. You don't have to grab the left foot, but if you can, you, you're more than welcome to. I'm just gonna actually touch. This creates a little more muscular engagement. Bending the left knee so that left foot is near the right hand. Twisting back. Good, let's windmill that right arm. Place both hands down flat on the mat. Step back, plank pose. Breathe here in plank. Two. Three. Four, and five. Let's bend the knees, touch the knees, then the chest, then the chin. So the tush is up in the sky, so eight point posture. Then inhale, point the toes, come out back into cobra. Exhale, push back downward facing dog. Turn your toes to the right, open your right belly muscles. And as you're turning your feet to the right, try to turn your chest and ribs back to the left. Inhale, center your dog. Exhale, turn your toes to the left. With the toes and, and hips kind of going leftwards, turn the chest and ribs to the right. Gaze can be to the right as well. Turn back to center. And step your left foot forward. Lunge pose, the right hand can come to the block, a stable block or the floor. You're gonna twist the left arm to the sky. Breathe here. And as you send the left arm out in front, you're gonna pull the left leg straight and maybe pull the right heel in and down to the floor. Inhale, rebend, twisted lunge. Exhale, pull into pyramid. Drawing from the pelvic bone, from the sit bones. Inhale, twist the lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Inhale, twist the lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Inhale, twist your lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Good, twist the lunge. Let's drop the back knee to the floor. It's the right knee. You're going to take that left hand all the way behind you, reaching back, looking back at your thumb. It's available. You're just going to bend your right knee, and maybe that hand can touch the foot. Doesn't have to. Breathe, enjoy the stretch.
Okay, let's spin the hands all the way back to the front of our mat and take a big step back, forward bend. Hang your spine. Bend your knees, touch the fingers to the floor, and try to stretch your chin and your chest and your crown upwards. You know those belly muscles are resting near the thighs. Build this sort of resistance, this push-pull sensation, pushing down with feet and fingers, reaching up with crown. And let the crown win, win the tug of war. Keep lifting up, use your back muscles, bringing the spine in, low back in, and the arms swoop up. Chair posture. Good, bring the hands behind your head. You're gonna sound a little weird, but you're gonna turn your belly muscles to the right. As you turn your belly muscles to the right, look back to your left. Inhale back, chair pose, regular chair. Swoop the arms up, center the body, then interlock the fingers behind the head. Turn your belly muscles to the left. Turn the gaze to the right. Belly muscles turning left, gaze turning right. Keep breathing. Good, sweep the arms all the way up standing. Exhale, hands to your heart. Shift into your right foot, bring up your left. You can just touch tiptoe. You're welcome to use the wall, but maybe make this a balancing effort today. Even just holding here, letting that right leg get stronger, or bring the leg up into tree pose. With the left hand on the knee, bring your right hand up. So the right side is nice and long. You're actually gonna kind of swing your hip over to the right. Use that arm as a counterbalance. And then inhale, try to pull from your outer hip muscle, pull your outer hip muscle in to bring your body back upright and that arm can kind of pendulum over to the right. Inhale, kind of crescent that right side open again. Exhale, bring it back to vertical. I am mirroring you if you're following along in the camera. Inhale, crest it over. Don't mirror me by losing your balance. You lose your balance on your own accord. <laughs> Exhale, back to center. One more time, crescent over. This is not an easy balancing exercise. If you need the wall, go right ahead, or you need to modify. Please go right ahead. Back to center. And then release that leg down. Bring up the right foot again. The toe can touch the floor. Still gives you access to the pose today. Otherwise, press the foot against the inner thigh. Right hands on the right knee. Left arms in the sky. So we inhale to open the left side. Exhale to straighten the body. We're feeling that the pelvis is moving wide. And the pelvis is moving back over the standing leg. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, vertical. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, vertical. One more. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, vertical. Good. And release down. Good challenge for this group. Turn the palms to face front. Pull the shoulder blades back. Ground down through your right foot. One more balancing pose for this set. Lift up your left knee straight in front this time. I'm going to change the side for this one. Left knee straight in front. You're going to reach down the outer seam of the leg, grab the ankle, and pull it back. If you can't hold the ankle, you're going to grab a strap and loop it around your foot. Okay, so once we've got our foot, then you're gonna take your other, you're gonna extend it straight forward. You're gonna pull back one. And now your hand is kind of pulling the foot back, 
Use your thigh muscles to pull the knee back forward. So back in line with the foot standing knee. And then two, pull straight back. Bring it back into alignment. So the fingertips can touch a wall if you're using the wall. Pull back three. Try to keep the knee perfectly in line. Parallel knee, drop back, number four. Back. Last one. And bring it back. Release the foot. Bring up your right knee. Go along the inseam, grab the outer ankle or use a strap. You can reach those left finger straight forward as a counterweight. They can be touching the wall if you're going to use the wall. So the thigh bone's trying to pull forward, the hand's trying to pull back, and we're going to seesaw between the two. Exhale, pull the leg back. We're trying to stay vertical the whole time with our body. Inhale, pull the leg forward. Body staying vertical. Exhale, pull back. Inhale, pull forward. Exhale, pull back. Now remember, it's both. The hand and the knee are both doing their thing the whole time. Forward. Just which one has more strength in that moment? Pull back. Forward. Just want to meet with resistance when you bring the knee forward. One more time, pull back. And then bring it forward, release the leg. Take a wide stance. Press down through your feet, lift your chest up, and then exhale, wide legged forward fold. Lotion those hips back, trying to keep the back straight as long as you can. Let those fingertips touch the ground, and then release your skull to the ground or towards the earth. Push down through your feet, bring energy up the inseams of the legs as you stretch your crown and chin forward. Breathe here. Keep drawing energy up through the crown, through the inseams of the legs. If it's available, you're going to pull your hands away like wings and rise up standing. Good. Hands down by your side. Just turn your left foot out 90 degrees, bend the knee. We're going to come into side angle pose. You're going to take the elbow, the left elbow, and perch it on the top of the knee. Press down through your feet. Now try to rotate your belly muscles, your hip, and your right rib towards the sky. Good. Scoop that left sit bone under and out through your left knee. Open your chest a little more. Good. Now take your right arm straight away on the diagonal from your back foot. Push through the outer edge of that back foot as you stretch those fingers away from it. Breathe. So it's like almost like you're trying to split the hips in two. One hip is pushing through your outer right foot, and the other hip is pushing through your front knee. Inhale, come all the way back up. Pivot on the heel, hands to heart center. Pivot on the other heel, turn the right foot out 90 degrees. And take your right elbow to the top of that knee. Plant that back foot. First, take a moment to rotate. The roll. Everything's on the left side, the top of the left hip. The left belly muscle, turn left. The ribs and shoulders, turn left. And then push energy down and away through both knee and feet, stretching that left arm out on the diagonal. Breathe here. Elongating that top edge of the body. As you push the right hip out through the right knee, and you push the left hip out through the outer left foot. Inhale, come all the way back up. Bring it back to center. Let's go back to the first side again to the left foot turned out 90 degrees. Let's keep both legs straight this time. 
Stretch your arms out, T-shape. And this time, lift your right arm straight into the sky, as high as you can get it. Keep that desire for those right fingertips to be as high in the air as possible. And you're just gonna rest your left hand on top of the left thigh. On the exhale, push the hand gently against the top of the leg as you slide it down, slide it down the shin. Maybe the fingers will touch the ankle. You don't have to go that far. Then inhale, slide it back up. So you're following your right fingertips up. We're just gonna do it a couple times. Exhale, slide down the leg. Inhale, follow the right fingertips up. Exhale, down. Try to keep those shoulder blades back. Try to keep the whole body rotating open. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Last one. This time, grab some part of your leg with your left hand and try to push it down as you reach the other arm up. Push your hips forward just slightly so you can lean both shoulders back. Sealing your feet into the mat. Inhale, rise up, work the work down. And let's turn back to neutral. Turn the right foot out 90 degrees. Straighten both legs. T shaped arms. Bring the left arm up, right hand along the front of the thigh. Same thing, you exhale, go down the leg. Inhale, up. Exhale, down, try to keep a controlled, steady movement. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Last one. Exhale down. Grab some part of the shin or ankle. Push down as you stretch the left hand up. Bring the hips up slightly forward so you can lean the shoulders a little more back. Pressing through the feet, breathe and feel the benefits of the pose. Inhale, back up. Bend your front knee. Take a big step to the short edge of your mat, arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, look forward. And then exhale, walk or step back, downward facing dog. Breathe here in your downward dog. Try to pull the tops of your shoulders away from each other to let your forehead grow heavier. Almost like you're trying to push your hands in towards each other, like you're trying to wrinkle your mat in the middle. In that newfound spaciousness, bring the hips further back. Good, lower down, hover your knees one inch off the ground. Breathe here and try to bring your, keep those knees one inch off the ground and try to bring your shoulders over your hands. Good, now send your sit bones way back and try to lift your sit bones up as high as you can. Back into your downward facing dog. Let's do that whole sequence again. Keep pressing those hands down and in, opening the top of the shoulder. Hover the knees. Keep the hover, bring the shoulders over the hands. And lift the sit bones way up and back. Push those hands in, broaden the tops of the shoulders. One more time, 
hover the knees. Bring the shoulders forward with hover knees. And then all the way back. And let's come on down, laying on our bellies. Laying on our bellies, we can point our toes straight back behind us. Lift your crown up as high as possible. But breathe smooth and even. Then relax a little bit. Squeeze your arms up. Bring your elbows and hands and shoulders up as high as you can get them. And then try to do the same exact thing. Lift your crown up as high as you possibly can while still be able to breathe. You could keep talking. You could keep teaching a yoga class if you were teaching a yoga class in this pose and breathe nice and smooth while lifting, engaging all those muscles around your spine. Elbows are lifting, hands are lifting, shoulders are lifting, and the crown. And then lower back down. If you have your blocks, great. If not, just place your hands out on front on the floor. Others are going to place your hands out in front on the blocks. Push down on the blocks first, and then try to slide the hands forward. So you're making your shoulder joint feel longer. Once you've made the shoulder joint feel longer, try to pull your hands towards each other without them moving. You try to pull the hands towards each other without them moving. Now lift your crown back up as high as you can. Level two, you're going to try to remove the blocks and keep all the action. The body doesn't change shape at all or as little as possible. Point your toes, draw your kneecap straight, and maybe lift your legs two inches off the ground. Can you still breathe? Would you still narrate a yoga class? <laughs> and then you can fold your palm over palm, rest your head on your backs of your hand as you rest a moment. Good. Place the hands down by your sides. Inhale, cobra pose. In your cobra pose today, you're going to push. It's like you're taking the bottom tips of your shoulder blades down into your heels of your hand. Just try that action. They rise up. Take the bottom tips of your shoulder blades down into the heels of your hand. As you lift the chest and try to pull the hands apart now. Instead of pulling the hands towards each other, now you're trying to pull them away from each other. Bringing the ribs and chest more forward. Let the pubic bone and the pelvis become heavy. Turn the biceps to face straight to the front of your mat. Good. Exhale. Push back. Child posture. Come back to that original starting pose with the forehead resting. Hips, uh, hands on the hips. The same initial sequence. Pressing down, lifting up through our core to kneeling pose. You're just going to rest here, no problem. You can want to just take the rest. We'll do a few actions like we did earlier, where you push your sit bone way back, keeping the chin and chest open. And then 
inhale, kind of lift up, keeping that pelvic tilt, just lengthening it. Keeping the pelvic tilt, you're just lengthening it. Sit way back. Pelvic tilt, lengthen it. Lift your chest up. That's it. One more time. Sit back. Sit bones pull back. And then lift your chest. Lift your chin. If it's available for you. You reach back and grab your heels this time for camel pose. Can you open the throat? Lift the ribs. And still talk. Still be present. Still breathe. Still feel what's good for the body. I'm just trying to be exiting the pose. Lift from your chest, send your hips forward first, and then send those sit bones back, draping down onto the mat, draping your forehead into the earth. Rest your nervous system. Feel the effects of the deep back bend. When you sit up, maybe you're going to need a prop to sit under your hips, maybe some blocks that have handy. Place your hips on some sort of prop to start. And I'll be mirroring you. So your right foot will be, um, and right knee will be open to the side. And your left foot right now will be flat on the floor with the knee in the air. From here, you're going to pull, you're going to lean to your right and pull the left leg. Back. So the left shin is long ways, the knees in front, and you're kind of pointing that toe, the left toe, straight back behind you. you kind of got this one side open, the other side then be rusty. Just check in here for a second, make sure this feels somewhat stable, the knees and everything feel okay. Put their hands on the knees. Push down through your knee and try to bring your chest forward. Bring your low back, sort of swoop it into the pose. So if you can't make this low back action, if you're like stuck in this rounded position, sit it higher. Bring the body forward. As you bring the body forward, you can now walk those hands back. I'm going to turn on my back here so you can see the next action. Bring the body forward, low back scoops in, and then you walk the hands back. Maybe this is enough. Body's long, chest is opening. And for some of us, you're going to maybe start to bend one elbow and come down to one elbow. Some folks are going to get onto both elbows. And some folks are going to get their shoulders down. You decide what works for you. I'm going to stay in the elbow version today. But we want to keep that your left, my right, Knee, your left knee down the ground. Open the chest. Open the throat if it's available. Keep the pelvis heavy. Slowly walk your way back up. Change the sides. So the right shin is moving back towards the back end. The right toes are pointing back. And the left foot is 
against the inner thigh, the left knee is open. Again, I recommend sitting up. It's going to make the pose a lot easier to help you. You can't get this action. You can't get the, see, most of the arms are going to be a little more rounded. My hands on my knees, I can pull my low back into the pose. I can lift the ribcage up into the sky. From there, I keep that arch, keep that extension of the spine. I'm going to walk back. You're going to walk back any amount that feels appropriate to your body. And you can get those elbows down. You push down with your elbows to help lift the chest. Maybe you can open your throat, check to make sure it's safe. You can put a block underneath your head. It might just happen to be there. <laughs> we'll give Grace the credit for that one. And then walk it back up nice and slow. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate um, briefly for you all fish pose, and then you're going to try it. And I'll come check the screen just to make sure everyone has a safe variation for themselves. So if you don't mind, if you know fish pose, you're welcome to just do a second one with me now. Otherwise, you can come check out the demonstration of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to pull back, we're going to come onto our backs, knees are bent. And you're going to lift your hips up. You're going to walk each arm under with the elbow slightly bent. So you're actually sitting on the backs of your hands. Light can be extended out straight. That's the way to start. And then you're going to push down with your elbows so it lifts the ribs and chest. And so the skin of my head is floating off the ground. Chest is floating off the ground. I'm going to let myself down just enough so that the top of my head is on the back. Notice how I can still talk. You should be able to do a little whistle or talk yourself, which kind of whistle that is. And some of us are going to lift our legs in the fish pose. Notice how my low back is still arched. It's from sit bones to skull. More advanced variation of arms and the toes are being lifted up with it. And then very important that we come out of it safely. We push our elbows down to relift our head. That's the one thing I want everyone to remember they're doing. Elbows down to relift the head. Then you can untuck a little bit or tuck so that you can lower down without straining your throat or hurting your neck. Okay. So if you were just watching the demonstration, please lie on your backs now. Knees bent, feet flat on the floor. Let's do our first version by lifting our hips up and then walking each arm under the hips. Good. Palms are flat. You're kind of like making a little cushion for your butt. Now, push down with your elbows mostly to help just feel how it arches and starts to lift your whole spine off the mat. So you push down with your elbows. You're going to bend your elbows. It's going to lift your shoulders. You're going to lift your chest. So your head is now floating off the ground. We want to make sure we can get to that step. You can extend your legs out straight if it's getting difficult. I think it's easier to do it that way. Straight on the ground. Just lay them on the ground. You got it. That's it. And now lower down just enough so the top of your head rests on the mat. Make sure there's not too much pressure on your spine or neck. Keep using those elbows to lift energy. And here's your fish pose. Find calm, find clarity. Recite a mantra. Or just keep breathing and maybe lift your legs in the air. Keep them straight. You know. Now it's a little difficult. You got to undo your hands. This is the level three version. You're going to lift your hands in the air as well. Be careful. You trust your neck. Feel calm. Be sensitive. Be listening. Beautiful. Breathe. You can still talk. Still do the pose. And make sure you know when it's time to start coming out of your pose. You might not get those hands back under the hips, that's fine, but you do want to get those elbows back on the floor to release the pressure and then undo the neck. Beautiful. Rest your body a moment here. Feel the effects of fish pose.
enjoy the quiet. We're going to start to do some cool down asanas. If you felt like doing another fish pose, you're more than welcome to do another one at your own pace. Otherwise, bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. Let's do a gentle bridge pose. So if you want to make it supported, you can put a prop under your hips. Otherwise, let's lift our hips up. This is going to help lengthen the back of our neck, kind of a counter to our fish pose. You want to you know, push the neck into the floor, but just feel that space that's being made between the shoulders and the skull. A lot of space to release that cervical spine. And slowly lower your butt back to the floor. Let's place our left uh, shin on top of our right knee. So not the ankle, but the shin. It's a little bit more closed than usual little box, more boxy than usual. Yeah. Just walk that left ankle a little more across. Um, you're fine, Kathy, but we are doing the other side. The left ankle's on top. There you go. And then slowly pull the right thigh toward the body. So the closer the left ankle is to the right knee, you open more the uh, outer back hip. And if you walk the left knee towards the right knee, you kind of slide it, you make the pose more narrow, you'll open a different part of your thigh, different part of your hip. So just explore, feel which one's better on your left hip today. Place your feet back on the floor. Bring your right shin up and place it on your left thigh. Bring the left thigh toward the body. Again, more towards the ankle, more towards the knee, opens different parts of the hip. Try to feel which one feels good to your body today. Release both feet to the floor. Walk your feet a little wider. Let your knees drop in towards each other. So our feet are, our knees are still bent there, Irina. There you go. Just relax your nervous system. Try to let your whole spine kind of settle into the mat. Let's interlock our fingers behind our head. Turn our gaze to the right. So we're looking at the right elbow. Try to get those elbows as wide apart as possible. Opening them to the mat. And then drop both knees to your left. Come back up, turn your gaze to the left, and take your knees to the right.
bring it back to center. Bring both knees into the chest very slowly. If you want to curl your forehead up towards your knees, trying to make your keep your spine nice and long as you do this. Keep your spine nice and long. Very slowly. Start to open the body into deep breath pose, stretching out your arms and legs, releasing your skull to the earth.
Stretch your body. Feel the sensations. Roll to your side and then take a comfortable seat. Thanks for practicing tonight. Namaste. You're welcome to unmute and say some goodbyes. Otherwise, I will uh, hope to see you next time. Pause the recording.